Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Father's Day weekend. Yes, sir. And what we want to do is I want to speak to all of us, but I especially want to speak to our men today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I believe the Lord has a word for us. Amen? Yeah. Amen. If you open your Bible to Judges chapter 4, Judges chapter 4. And uh, wherever you are, if you can stand where you are. We have a, a few people here who can stand where you are. Judges chapter 4. And um, we are going to allow God to speak to us today. Judges chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, and then 18 through 21. And I am reading in your hearing. This is what the Bible says. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lebedoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent them and called Barak, the son of Abinadim, and, and, and out of Kedesh Benaiah, for us, Kedesh Benaiah, Tali, you work with me on that one. The Lord of God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take me ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. And I will draw unto thee this river, Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jacob's army. With his chariots and his multitude, I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If you will go with me, yes, sir. then I'll go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Verse 9. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thy honor, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Verses 18 to 21 says this. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in my Lord, turn to me, fear not. And when he had turned into her and to the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk, and she gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire thee and say, Is there any man here? Thou shalt say, No. Uh -huh. Now here's the clincher. <laughs> then Jael, he Heather's wife, took a nail of the tent yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. and took a hammer in her hand mm. and went softly unto him yes, and smote the nail into his temples Woo. and fastened it into the ground for he was what? Yes. Fast asleep yes, sir. Yes, sir. and weary <laughs> and she died. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now I, I was tempted as I was reading, I was tempted to go ahead and call this message Killing Me Softly. Watch out, Rachel. Yes, sir. Watch yes, sir. Watch out. But I have a different, a different uh, title. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brothers, yes, sir. Mm. don't let her catch you sleeping. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> don't let her yes. catch you sleeping. Yeah, you mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will speak to us today. Father in heaven, I'm asking and praying that you would speak to us, especially our men, as we watch what's going on in society, oh God. Yes. For you are calling us to step up, dear Lord. Yes. And you're calling us, dear Lord, to be empowered by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, Father in heaven, we are asking and praying, dear Lord, that as we hold out our cups, you are pouring your spirit until it overflows. Lord, we're holding out our hands, dear Lord, asking and begging and pleading for the bread of life. Feed us until we want no more. And when it's all said and done, we'll be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and all the praise. Let the church say, Amen. And Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Don't let her catch you sleeping, brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very recently, I read across an article that I viewed as interesting, yet disturbing at the same time. The information that I share should awaken every male, man, young person, and old, wherever you are. According to an October 2nd, 2017 report from Forbes magazine, 
from the Journal of American Medical Association, the male population is facing a serious crisis. You follow me, Alvin? The article mentioned that testosterone therapy among American men is on the rise. Across the population, men of today have less testosterone compared to the men of the same age a generation ago. I'm afraid that the studies show that men's testosterone levels have been declining fearfully for decades. I thought I'd get some more such numbers. Uh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I, I, need, I need my testosterone. Amen. 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 One study revealed a substantial drop in the U.S. men's testosterone levels since 1980s, with the average levels declining about 1% every year. This means, for example, that a 60-year-old man in 2004 had testosterone levels of 17% lower than those 60-year-old men of 1987. Follow me now. Another study of Danish men produced similar findings with double-digit uh, double uh, uh, double numbers where there is a decline among men from the 1960s in comparison to those of the 1920s. These trends also coincide with the decline in muscular and skeletal strength among young men. According to the 2016 study, the average 20 to 34 year old young man could apply about 98 pounds of force with his right hand grip, which is down from 117 pounds by a man the same age in 1985. Men, we're losing our strength. <laughs> Although the grip strength isn't necessarily a proxy of overall fitness, it's a strong predictor, now listen to me now, of future mortality. In other words, the stronger you are, the longer you will live. Yeah. What's behind the downward trends? The decline in testosterone levels is almost certainly linked to higher rates, listen to me, of obesity, which surpasses, which surpasses the testosterone. And many observers put more weight on increased exposures to environmental toxins, pesticides, preservatives, and chemicals common to household products. Mm. I'm going somewhere now, follow me. All right. But what's happening to men physically merges with a broader story of social transformation. Young men have fallen behind women in educational alike attainments. Are you following now? Women now outnumber men on university campuses in almost every single region throughout the world. Wow. One study shared that 2.2 million more women attend college than men. Men are increasingly dropping out of the workforce, expressing less work centrality. Women who enjoy much greater economic autonomy from their grandmothers than their grandmothers now can afford to be correspondingly pickier, pickier for their spouses. Let me say that one more time. Let me say that one more time so y'all get it. What your grandmother chose back in the day, women of today are just not choosing. Hmm? And they are not thrilled by husbands who are just another mouth to feed. In the book, In the Event, Hannah Rosen notes that of 30 occupations expected to grow fastest in America, in America for the next coming years, women dominate 20, including nursing, accounting, child care, and food preparation. Few women in rich countries now, listen to me now, few women in rich countries now even need a man to support them or raise their families. Brothers, we in trouble. All these societal and cultural changes have left millennial women in uncharted waters. More face a dating pool where partners of equal education and status are harder to come by, leaving them waiting for men to catch up 
or deciding to go it alone. Mm. When baby boomer women were coming of age, they wanted kinder, gentler men who were in touch with their feelings. Tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> now, millennial women yearn for guys with more testosterone. All right, now. Men who can man up and take care of business. Yes. Amen. Yes. Saints, I don't know about you today, but I'm afraid while men were sleeping, society changed on us, brothers. Are you following me today? I'm talking to us men out there. While men were sleeping, single mothers decided that they would take care of their families even with limited resources. While, while men were sleeping, women decided that enough was enough and it was time to break the glass ceiling. Oh, while men were sleeping, sisters decided to go back to school, get an education, and become a force in the workplace. While men were sleeping, the female population decided we want marriage and we want male companionship, but if they can't handle business, then we're going it alone. What's happening to our testosterone? They caught us sleeping. Here we go. In the story of Deborah and Barack, we gained some societal insight to many of the challenges that we as men are facing today. We number one find a man, Barack, who refuses to accept the role of leadership that God had placed on him. We find Deborah, a woman who is operating within her gifts and allows God to use her. Then we have Sethera, an oppressive overlord, oppressive overlord, seeking to keep God's people in bondage. And saints, I don't know about you today, but there are a lot of Sethera's out there who are trying to keep us in bondage. That's right, that's right. But then finally, finally, we have Jael, the hero of the day, and she's a woman chosen by God to rid the people of their enemy. Now, I need you to do this for me. I need you to follow me with the story. In this particular story, sadly, it starts out like many of the stories about Israel in the Bible. The Bible says this, Judges chapter 4, verse 1. And the children of Israel again, again, did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ahu died. You know what happens is a lot of times someone will disappear out of the scene, and the Bible says they did it again. It wasn't the first time, but they did it repetitively. Again, they fell short. Please note, please note now, there is something alluring, addictive, and attractive about sin that causes Israel to repetitively find themselves in the same trap over and over and over again. Can I preach right here? There are far too many of us who are in the same cycle over and over again in our lives. And we are on the head of the wheel doing the same thing, and God is saying, I'm trying to pull you out and put you on the marathon, but you keep going back to the hamster wheel. And God said, why don't you let me free you and allow you to do something with your life? Hmm? So God, God, the Bible tells us that they did it over and again. And God has been constantly trying to take Israel and move them forward, yet at the same time, while God's trying to move them forward, they want to go backwards. Prior to Israel's entering into the promised land, God promises the chosen nation that as long as they remain faithful to him, that he would drive the Canaanites out of the land little by little. Yeah. That's found in Exodus chapter 23, 27 and 33. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you, but I'll read it just a little bit. This is what the Bible says. I am conditioning it. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies, let me say that again, I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. But say, when God makes a promise, you can best believe it's going to be done. Amen out there. Once Israel entered into the promised land, and they were given specific instructions and a warning that when you enter into the land of Canaan, the first thing that I need you to do is totally and utterly drive out the Canaanites.
nice. Because if you don't, it's going to be a snare to you. If you don't get that sister out of your life that you know she's dragging you down, it's going to be a snare unto you. If you don't get that brother out of your life who's dead, who's taking you down, they're going to be a snare unto you. And if you don't do it now, they're going to keep dragging you through the mud. So this is what God says. He says this. I need you to go ahead and handle business. And the Bible gives on, uh, he gives an explanation. Uh, the Bible gives, goes on to explain the Israel way. When they enter into the land of Canaan, they stop fighting. They stop battling. They stop clashing with the enemy. And they eventually became complacent in their lives. See, we got to know this today. That we war not against flesh and blood. But there's a battle every single day in our lives. And you got to keep fighting. I don't mean with your fist. You got to keep fighting with prayer. You got to keep fighting with the word of God. You got to keep fighting sometimes to hold your peace. Hmm? And, and, and so here it is now. Here it is now. There's times, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that when we're facing the enemy, we got to rely on him. So Judges chapter 10, Judges chapter 128 says this. When Israel was strong, they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Okay. So we got a problem here. God told Israel, when you get into the land, I need you to go ahead and kick them out. Go ahead and utterly destroy them. Instead, Israel decides, they say, you know what? What we'll do is we'll go ahead and let Canaanites stay in the land and we'll just go ahead and let them serve us. But say, what you allow to connect with your life will eventually tear you down if you're not careful. Yes, yes. I find it interesting that when Israel was at its strongest and at their best and the most powerful, they did not take advantage of the opportunity that God placed before them to completely conquer their enemies. Let me say that one more time. When they were at their strongest, at their best, they did not take advantage of the opportunity. Let me speak to some young people out there right now. While you are 18 and 19 and 20 years old, take advantage of going to school before you got to pay bills, have a family, and raise children. Take advantage of the opportunity when you have it. In this particular promise, the condition was God would do his part so Israel could do their part. And as long as Israel did their part, God would do his part. Oh, y'all are not following now. See, what happens is with God, there's a reciprocal relationship. As long as you do your part, God can do his part. And when he does his part, you can do your part. Because when you do your part, God can do his part. And when he does his part, he empowers you to do his part, your part. What happens is God says, when you move, I move. And when I move, you move. And I think the boy, but the boy said it like this ludicrous. When I move, you move. And when you move, I move. Amen out there. Hmm? Could it be, could it be here that, that we have too many people that are blaming God for their life uh, instead of putting the responsibility on themselves? Because God is saying, if you go ahead and move, I can move. And if I can move, then you can move, but we allow others to get in our way. We are not blaming ourselves to get blaming others to get in our way. And God is saying, I'll do my part, and you do your part. And if you do part of your part, I can do my part. And if I'm doing my part, you'll follow me today. I'll do your there's a reciprocal relationship that has to happen. Some of us are looking for a job just sitting on the couch. I'm, I'm, I'm praying about it. <laughs> and God said, I need you to move so I can move. Amen out there. Oh, yeah, I'm looking for somebody out there. I'm looking for somebody to date. I'm, I'm looking for somebody to marry. But at the same time, you ain't handling no business. You can't put no, no, no carrots, no meat, no stew in the, in, the, in the soup. And God said, I need you to move so I can move. And when I move, you can move. What happens is in our lives, in our lives, God is telling us that when you are strongest, when you have the opportunity, when you can battle, go ahead and take advantage of the opportunity. Take advantage of the education when your brain is the sharpest. Take advantage of your health when your body is the healthiest. Take advantage of your spiritual walk when your mind is the purest. Take advantage of opportunities when God gives it to you. 
different day. As a matter of fact, one commentary declares that at this point in Israel's history, what drove them away from God was the fertility of the land. Now, I'll make you pay attention to this. What drove them away from God was the blessings of God. As Israel settled into the agricultural life, they started to rely on the fertility gods to enrich their soil. They started to trust in false gods that can make the land fertile, instead of the real God that could supply their needs when they were in the desert. You think, you think the reason why you got a job is because of your smarts and your education? The reason why you got that job is because of God. The reason why you think I got my, I got my house based on my credit report. Your credit report ain't nothing, brothers and sisters. The reason why you have anything that you have is because of Bring out the best in her, and she 
Oh, I'm talking to this guy. He didn't get mad because she went to go in and, and get a degree. He didn't, she didn't get mad because he got a raise. Say, when you <laughs> when when you blessed, I'm blessed. Here's the problem. It's alright for someone 
to go with you for moral support. Yes, but always remember that in your life, your number one partner yes, is God. Yes, Amen. Yes. As long as God is with you, you cannot lose. I'm going to say this again. As long as God is with you, you cannot lose. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and I said to myself, I said, man, I said, this George Floyd situation, I said, man, everything lined up. George Floyd didn't even know what was going on. This man put his, his, his knee in this man's neck, and this man wanted to die. But what he didn't know, what the devil meant for evil, Because they were about 
to build a railroad. This is what took place in Knoxville, Tennessee in the early 1900s. The problem with being a civil engineer with the railroad during the turn of the century was the shortage of eligible young women. The brothers were out there working, but there weren't a whole lot of sisters around. I don't know if I could have been there, amen. Hey, man. <laughs> God placed me in the yes, 70s or 40s. Yes, amen, amen. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> Benjamin Morrell was one such engineer. Ben was a tall, reticent man with a quiet sense of humor and great sensitivity for people. Because Ben's mother died at the age of 13, Ben was used to being a loner in his life. Although he was used to being alone like all the other men, he longed to also have a wife as well. But he kept his thought between him and God. He would pray every night, Lord, please send me the right person that I can live my life with. On one spring day, the word had gone around the camp that the boss's sister-in-law was coming to visit. And all the men knew that what her name was going is with Virginia. She was single, and Virginia was free. Virginia's parents sent her to Knoxville to escape the yellow fever going around the deep south. Whoever was going to have a chance for Virginia only had one day to work their magic. Just one day. Somebody got a hold of her picture, and the men began to circulate the picture around. Everybody saw Virginia, and they said, Mmm, Virginia is fine. I got to have a date with Virginia. The men would ask Ben, hey Ben, what do you think about the picture? Ben would chuckle, and then he'd just walk out the door. But in his heart, Ben, quiet Ben, yes, was in love. The men in the camp were so enthralled with the picture and the competition that nobody noticed Ben's eyes light up. They didn't see how he held on to the picture. Ben was in love. Quiet Ben. The evening the whole camp was, uh, was wrestling uh, because the next day the, the train uh, that Virginia would be on was coming to town. As the whistle from the train grew louder and the steam of the engine grew closer, the men could hardly contain themselves because fine young Virginia was on that train. Wow. As the train pulled up, the men realized that she looked even better than the picture. Can you imagine? But as they looked closer, every man's heart collapsed in despair. Well. When the train came to complete stop, the person that was grinning ear to ear and helping Virginia down was Benjamin Merle. Uh -huh. When they saw how Virginia looked at Ben and how Ben looked at Virginia, the men knew that it was all over and none of them stood a chance. Follow me now. Later, Ben's friends asked him, how did you do that, Ben? And Ben responded, uh, I knew that I did not have a chance with all hundred scoundrels of you around. I had to be the first yes, sir. to get to Virginia. Yes, sir. So I walked the previous station to meet her. Someone stated, but that's 17 miles, and that would take all night. And this is what Ben said, yes, it would take all night, but while you were sleeping,
you speak. Handle your business, brothers. I don't know what handling your business means for you today. Handling your business, baby, you know what? Uh, August is coming up, and, and you say to myself, you know what? I know it's COVID-19, but I'm going to see Dale Stephan to, uh, to get a vocational trade. Yes. Handle your business, baby, you say, you know what? Let me go ahead and pull up my credit report, creditkarma.com. Hmm? Yeah. Handle your business, baby, you say, Lord, I need to go ahead and get out of debt. Handle your business, baby, I need to go ahead and take my wife out on a date. Amen. Amen. Yeah. means waking up and not allowing them to catch you sleeping. Brothers, we got a challenge out there. Yes. According to the medical report, seriously, there's a lack of testosterone that's going around. I don't mean you need to go out and go get some testosterone from a uh, 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 You don't need to go ahead and get it in order for that baseball player. I can't remember what his name is. <laughs> you don't need to do that. You want your testosterone to increase? Wake up and step up. That's all this world and God is calling you to do. Don't let it catch us. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for speaking to us through your word. Father in heaven, you, you're challenging us today as men to step up, oh God, to make a difference in this world. Father, for our families, for our communities, for our church, for you. I'm asking and praying in the name of Jesus Christ that you would do something for us, dear Lord. Uh, infuse in us spiritual testosterone. It infused in us, dear Lord, on an awakeness and alertness that recognizes what's going on around us, oh God. And Father in heaven, most of us, that prepares us to see your face in peace. Amen. And we say, Lord, we never say, Lord, we fulfill our potential in you. Yes. I thank you, Lord, and we praise you above all things. To my men, don't let it cast us sleep. Don't let them catch you. Most of all, don't let the devil catch us sleeping. Lord, don't let us, don't, please don't catch me. Don't let you, I, we don't want you to catch us sleeping. Lord. Well, well. We thank you so much for hearing us in this prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, gentlemen. God bless you, sisters. God bless you. Jesus, that we do pray. Amen. 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 